this is Jenny P4. Welcome to the Boomer Project, where today we have our newest contributor, Al Basile, a retired English teacher who has been a horn player, a songwriter, a poet, and some of his material is very, very relevant to Boomers and our experience, so I've invited him to join us and I would like to welcome him. He's going to tell you all about uh, what he's doing himself, so here he is. Welcome, Al. I, I enjoy being here. <laughs> oh, good. All right. So there's a poem that I read of yours called The Cracked Plate, which I found particularly relevant um, personally about, you know, holding on to the past and maybe moving on for the future. But um, I would love for you to read that poem and talk about what it means to you and, you know, what you would like people to take away from it. Sure. Thanks for letting me read it. Um, um, very, very many of my poems are grounded in my own experiences, and this one is. Um, and it explains itself as it goes, I would say. So this is The Cracked Plate. I saw the crack while cleaning up the dishes after lunch. The clear rinse water scudded off the surface of the brindled plate you bought us years ago the only one that's left from our long time together. Then we used it rarely, saving it for special occasions. But I like to use it now for every day. The water drained away and there it was, straight as an interstate and pointing up to midnight. So I thought of you then living down in Florida and married well, if pictures tell the story, by now some kind of graceful older lady. I'll always love you, you said once, but I won't always feel it. Time has proved you right. What I feel is wrapped up mostly in the way that neither of us had a child after the one we would have had together. We learn about good first and better later, and better still always appears to be a possibility. We often see the best in retrospect after it's gone. This plate's days are numbered. I could put it in the cupboard, baby it with care, protect what's left. Instead, I'll treat it like it's still undamaged. Use it every day. Yeah, no, I, I love that. So talk about where that's from and, and how you feel um, that other people might relate to that poem. Yeah, there's a couple of things about this poem. One is, um, the, the things that stay with us that evoke memories, the objects that evoke memories, our memorabilia, um, they're things and things can come and go. And so on one level, this poem is about a thing that isn't gonna last forever. Um, but when the plate does finally break, um, the thing will be gone that reminded me of this particular woman, but the emotions that I have and the memories that I have will not be gone because things come and go, but supposedly emotions are forever. However, I think we've all experienced a situation where you break up with somebody and some time, after some time has gone by, and they start saying, gee, I don't know if I ever really felt this or that for you. We, we rewrite history and we, in order to live more comfortably with the present, we go back and change the past. And so the other thing that I like about this poem that it reminds me of is the way this woman said, I'll always love you, but I won't always feel it. And I think that's a very gracious thing that she said because she didn't say, I'm going to second guess what we what we had or what we felt. She even says, I'll always love you. But at the same time, she's moved on right. and her feelings have moved on and she's into a different life that I'm not a part of. And so she she simultaneously respected what we had in the past, but moved on into something else for the future. So that's something that I'm grateful to her for because she she literally said those words and I've just borrowed them to put into the poem. 
Well, I think it's interesting to have a plate as a symbol of a relationship because first of all, a plate is breakable and fragile and temporary. And especially if you have a whole dinner set and it's only dwindled down to one <laughs> piddly yeah. plate, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, so it's, it's like symbolically, you know, time has moved on for you, whether you want it to or not. And I love the line about the crack, like the highway, you know, uh, yeah, <laughs> somewhere. I think that that's good. There's nothing, there's nothing stopping what's going to happen to this plate. Um, but there's something that I bring to the end of it, of course, which is I'm not going to hang on to the thing. The thing is fragile, as you say. And if I wanted, I could protect it. But I'm going to use the thing. Things are there to be used because I understand that I can use it every day because I like the way it makes me feel. And when it's broken, I won't be able to do that anymore, but I'll still go on with the same feelings. So I'm going to use the thing for what it is good for, but I'm going to also respect the emotions that it represented to me, even when I can't look at the thing anymore. So years ago, I knew someone who was a potter who married a friend of mine and at their wedding, um, they gave everyone uh, a raku plate that this guy had made. Fabulous. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. it was great. And so um, I actually inherited my ex-husband's too. So I had two of them and um, <laughs> which I was really thrilled about. And so I had a friend also who was at the wedding and she um, has a different philosophy about possessions. And I've been using those plates for years. And um, one of them finally broke and I, I, I felt terrible about it. But, uh. and, and the other one now has a chip in it. And, you know, hers are probably still on the shelf where they were because, you know, this guy was kind of a famous potter and yep. didn't want anything to happen to those. So, I mean, there's a philosophy in there too about, you know, how precious are things for us and um, are we going to hold on to them? Are we going to live our lives and experience things? So I think yeah. that's an issue too, you know, and I think well, the boomers you know, have less time. And so we, I, I think we should go for it. Well, the <laughs> other thing, yeah, certainly the other way to look for, to, to look at, at a plate is that aside from the fact that it reminds you of the person who gave it to you, or maybe a relationship or emotions that you had that are attached to it, it was created for use. It was created to yeah. be used. Yeah. And so you want to let things, being things, realize their nature. And so something that's been made to be used, use it. And there's no shame in an object that's been used and finally breaks and is no longer of use it's had its lifetime and as i say the the emotions you don't have to identify the feelings that you get from something with the thing itself it, it doesn't the feelings don't go away because you can't serve dinner on that plate anymore right so i think that, that there's a great message about moving on and i think that's something that we can all from and yeah there, you know there's also another dimension to this and the reason that i wrote this uh this poem this way is that uh, years ago when i was teaching english i taught a novel by zora neale hurston called their eyes were watching god which is a terrific novel and early on in the novel the the main character Janie, comes back to the town that she grew up in and she goes to visit uh, this woman who had been her best friend uh, and she's she's talking about the, she's talking about her childhood and her grandmother, and she said that that there was a time when she was a girl when her grandmother uh, <laughs> said to her, "Set me down easy, Janie. I'm a cracked plate, meaning I'm fragile. You know, I'm not going to last. Yeah. Treat me. Uh, you treat me a certain. You know, treat me the right way." Uh, because I've been through all of this. And so I always came to see cracked plates in a, in a special kind of light. And that conditioned me to when I got this particular one 
which is still upstairs in, in my uh, on my kitchen rack and I still use it. So in a way, I think, you know, by the time you get to be around our age, we're all kind of cracked plates too, you know, in one sure. way, everybody, everybody has a few cracks somewhere. So it's true. Yeah. I so, mean, the whole, the idea of fragility um, and how you deal with fragility, it's an interesting exchange because on one level, like what the grandmother was saying to Janie was, you treat me a certain way because I'm, I'm damaged, I'm cracked, I'm fragile. But we also have to have to come to an accommodation within ourselves with our own cracks. How are we going to live knowing that we can't, uh, that certain chances it isn't wise for us to take at this point. Some things that we used to do, we can't do or we can't do in the same way. And so what's your relationship to your own fragility and your own sense of yourself? Can you remain can you continue to feel like yourself when something that you used to do is no longer available to you? And that comes down to how you identify yourself. And it's a really important question as people age because so many people as they get older don't realize that they're identifying with some things that they do, which when they're taken away, there are people who have careers like this, when they retire, they don't know what to do with themselves. Okay. They identified themselves with that career. And so now who am I? And um, so you have to uh, you have to be careful to figure out who you really are and separate that from the thing that you can or can't do today. If you if you understand what I'm saying, of course, I understand what you what you're saying, because I know we're first, so <laughs> I think it's a good place to stop for. We're going to have lots of conversations and lots of poetry and maybe we'll even get <laughs> your music and i'm so delighted that you're part of the boomer project <laughs> till next time till next time